Hello guys and welcome back to another PowerShell tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. The last tutorial I made we created a Excel spreadsheet and we had PowerShell color code items that were enabled and disabled and we made a nice little report. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be creating a CSV file report so if someone needs some data real quick you know there's no reason to add colors and stuff this need to know certain information so we're going to create a custom report on user accounts so I went ahead and I already created a CSV file that we're going to be using for the users so in this file we're going by the SAM account name and this is the SAM account name for all the users that we want to pull information on so one thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a couple of cool little tricks that I like using when I like to reuse certain code. So instead of typing out the path to my desktop for the import CSV file, it's you know it's different for each person. So if someone else were to run this, it would wouldn't work because it would look for my folder. So one thing I like to do is if you put these brackets in here and you type in environment and then you put two colons it gives you a bunch of different commands but what we want to use is get folder path and then you put quote you type in desktop because that's the name of the folder and then that's it so this will get the path to my desktop folder so if you look down here see users m doherty desktop so if anybody were to run this it would pull their information and then what we'll do is we'll store this into a variable called my desktop so my desktop space equals space. So now when we run this, it stores that information in desktop so it doesn't display it here. But if we were to highlight this variable and run it, obviously it shows the path to the desktop. So now that we have that in place, what we can do is we can do an import dash CSV and then we can do dash path and then we can do my desktop slash and as you can see all these pop up and don't tab complete because it will actually put the path in here so we'll just type in users.csv and you want to put this in quotes so to combine it all as a string value so now if we run this it imports the CSV with all those users that's on my desktop but if we just run this part right here the string value see users and Doherty desktop backslash users.csv so that's the actual path so now we have that we're going to store all these users into a variable called users plural so now if we run this code everything's stored in users it doesn't display it on the screen but if I ever use this variable it knows all those users are in there so we'll go ahead and clean that up alright so next we want a for each loop for each and you put parentheses and we want to do dollar you can make this anything you want I just make it user so we know what the variable contains so for each user so we just created a new variable user in dollar users and then we say what we want to do for each one of those so and one thing I always do is I put two squiggly brackets and then I make sure I enter the second one down if you don't do this it could be bad practice and you could forget this and then your script to error out and you have to hunt down this one little bracket that you forgot so so now that we have that now we want to put what we want to do for each user so I want to get ad user dash identity and then we're going to do user dot sam account name I know it's not populating in here because it doesn't know this yet but once you run this script it up uh, and you retype this it'll uh, pop up in here and the reason we're doing SAM account name is because if you that's the title we go by for these uh, this is the attribute we're pulling so if you run the users again if you look at the top SAM account name so that's the title on our CSV file above these users so We'll say get ad user and the identity is the user that sam account name so it's going to grab the first person it's going to grab the sam account name administrator so this is going to be administrator then when it runs it through again it'll be guest now it runs through again and so on and so forth and so let's say we want to do 
down here we do get AD user identity and if you're just doing you, you don't need the identity I just like putting it there just so if anything ever happens I know it's not going to be an issue so we'll do account 29 so this is the information the properties that it pulls for the account automatically all the attributes so distinguished name enabled given name name object class but there's so many more attributes to a user account so if we were to run that again and we do properties and we do star to grab all of them as you can see there's a lot of properties on a user account so let's say someone needs a custom report and they need certain information well we can tell them all the information we can get is right here so for right now we'll just grab some things so we'll go ahead and just open a notepad file and we'll pick out what we want to use so and as you can see account expires is in this weird format and there's also a last log on timestamp if we can find it last log on dates this user may not have it because they're test accounts so they've never logged in but if we were to clear the screen get AD user M Doherty and we do properties and instead of grabbing all the properties I can just type in last log on timestamp so to show last log on timestamp as you can see this date is real weird we can format this date to the actual file time date I can show you that too that, that seems to be challenging but it's really simple so that's one thing we can grab if you notice I just typed in that one property and it just added it to the list. You don't never want to do property star because if you try to grab all the information on all the users, you can really bulk down your DC and probably, you know, bring the production network down. So you don't never want to do that. And never filter star or property star because you don't need all users, all attributes that are really make a mess in your environment. So we'll get the Sam account name. So we'll do Sam accounts name we'll do uh, let's see we we'll do given name and sure name so first and last name and last log on timestamp all right so now if we were to run this right now it would pull in all this information right here besides the last log on timestamp for every single user in that report so if we were to run this right now it's running through and it ran through and grabbed all the users and all those attributes which we don't really need it to do all that <clears throat> so we'll add a property to grab last log on timestamp and then instead of grabbing all this information it's really not necessary you can do select and then put in the attributes you want. So we want Sam account name, comma, given name, comma, sure name, comma, last log on time stamp. So now if we were to clear our screen and run this, so it pulled the information for each person. And not all these accounts have been logged on to, so not all of them have last log on timestamps. So now we have that. So you kind of see how our CSV file is kind of filling out. But let's say we don't want the project manager to see given name and sure name because they won't know what that is. So we can change these to show how we want, which is what I'll be showing you today. So now we have that. We'll go ahead and make this screen a little bit bigger. So we have that. So now we want to store this into a variable because we don't want it to display on the screen just yet. So we'll call this info. And then what we'll do up here is we'll create an array. So array stores multiple values and you can keep adding values to an array which is why they are so great. So we'll do dollar art $report. So we'll create a variable called report but we're going to make it an array. So an array is an at sign with two parentheses so this is an empty array right now 
and we can add information to it as we go along. So now we have that, we'll go down here, and then we'll do dollar report. And we want to do plus equals. So this means the report's never equal to just one thing. It's going to add each value as it goes through. So it's going to say, you know, user administrator, this is the information. Then when it runs through, it's going to say, okay, guest needs to go in this report too. So we'll add it to the report. So that's what that means. And then what we want to do, it's a new thing in PowerShell 3.0 and higher, I believe. It's a PS custom object. And then you do at, and then two squiggly brackets. So this is going to be a, create a custom object for us. So now this is how we're going to create our custom table. So instead of Sam account name, we, do, we can type in and any strings with spaces you need quotes so we can type in user ID so instead of saying Sam account name it's going to say user ID and we're going to do space equals space and we're going to do dollar info because that's what's that's where our variable is being stored and we're going to do dot and then you can see all the attributes that we pulled in for that account right here and we want Sam account name so now the report is it's going to say user ID instead of Sam account name at the top. We'll do another one. So we'll do so the next thing we grab is the given name. So which is the first name? So first name dollar info dot given name. This should have pulled up. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure it's going to work. And then so, and if you want to test to see if it works, the variable, the last user is still stored in info since we ran it, so, yeah, it's given name, let's see, get ID user, MD, or we'll do a account 29, because uh, they have a given name, so given name equals that, I like copy and paste too, just in case I misspelled something. All right, so, and then we'll just keep going. And if we have an issue, we can fix it later. Issues are always good because you learn more as you go along. So we'll do last name, dollar info, dot, sure name. And we'll do uh, last log on and we'll make that equal to dollar dot last log on time stamp all right and then so that stores all the information I always like clean up my scripts up to make them look nice all right so we're done with our for each loop right now so we can bring that down some and then after all this is done, we want it to show us the report. So if we do dollar report, it'll spit out the information in the report. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So yeah, so you got user ID, first name. Some people don't have a first name. And you can we can add error handling in here, so we can make it say no name, or you can just leave it blank. Last name and then last logon timestamp. So some people don't have a, doesn't have a first name or a last name, and then you can run a report, do the same thing, run a report on people that don't have a first name or a last name, and then you can figure out those people. So that's what our custom report will look like right now. So what we can do next is we can take this information after it's done, and we can do export dash CSV. And then path, and then look, we can use our my desktop again, and we can put new report, and we put it in quotes. And make sure you put dot csv. So now we don't have to long type that long path. So now if we were to exit this out, don't save, and if we ran this, there it is, new report. Go ahead and open this up. And here's your new report that you can send the person. Uh, one thing I like to do is go in here and I just delete column one 
they don't need to see that. It's just information. There. It's basically, type system management automation PS custom object. So you don't really need that. So delete that, and then you can save it. Yes. So here's our new report, and then send this to your project manager or whoever, and they'll have this information. But as you can see, the last log on timestamp isn't helpful because it's some weird value. So let's fix that. So what you want to do is there's a command you can use date time to well, let's see to well, let's see. date time say it's file from file time there it is and then we do dollar info dot last log on time stamp so if we were to run that right now there it goes so it pulled the last log on time stamp for the last person so if we store this into a variable called timestamp so now for each person it's also going to, so after it grabs a value, it's going to change the timestamp to this timestamp value. So when you do last log on down here, you just change it to dollar timestamp. So if we re-ran this and we refresh our desktop, the new document is here. Oop, wrong one. Let's see. New reports. And there you go. So now the last log on timestamp looks a lot better. You can change the format of this. Six twelve thirty one sixteen hundred is what it, it means that the user hasn't logged on yet. It's that's the actual date string that you see in there. It's really, really long. That is Microsoft's format for twelve thirty one sixteen hundred. There's a reason they use that date. I forget why. So that's how you create a custom report. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. And I'll be glad to share any comments. Thank you for watching.